let's do some question and answers. Yes. So you guys sent us questions on Joe's TikTok and Facebook. Mm -hmm. So we're going to answer them. Let's do it. Yeah, there's a plethora of questions that you guys asked on TikTok, Facebook. I got them all pulled up right here. And we're just going to go through them and we'll answer them honestly, openly, so you can get to know us as we venture into the YouTube world together. All right, so we're going we're gonna to answer as many as we possibly can. So the first one is from Alyssa. Other than being a parent, if you could do slash be anything, what would you do slash be? Uh, I would say either probably a meteorologist. I always oh, have yeah. seen myself on TV, like doing like news because I'm like really passionate about hurricanes living here in Central Florida. I love tracking them. I love, I just get like very obsessed when like there's a hurricane coming. So I could picture myself being like on TV doing the weather. And I always yeah. thought that growing up. And yeah, that might be something you don't know about Joey. He does love the weather. <laughs> he loves love tracking it. storms and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So he'll be like, oh yeah, did you see that there's a storm out in the tropics? You know, name five, six, seven, eight, four. I'm like, okay, honey. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I'm, I, I get excited over it. I think I always thought that I'd want to like flip houses, but that seems like too much work. Mm -hmm. So I honestly don't know. I've always wanted to like have maybe real estate and kind of do management, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. of that. I, I mean, I don't really know. I'd love to be a tester for code, and I'm actually really enjoying the editing of the YouTube videos. So oh, yeah, yeah. We'll She's, see. Hey, shout out to her editing skills on the first YouTube video. I mean, I think I did pretty good. Really good. One. Yeah, and yeah. so this is our second one. Yes. We're excited about it. Yeah. So here we go. Second question. Okay, so this is from Alyssa. If little Joey was a girl, what would his name have been? Well, we're going to do a video of baby names we love, so but stay tuned for that. But I personally love Shoshana. <sighs> and I love little Shosh, but he wasn't on board with that. I think we had a lot of names that we both like, though. Like yeah, yeah. Montana. Santana. Santana. Carolina. There was a, we have a mountain yeah. of girls' names that we did that we, not. That we really liked, but they right. all ended in A-N-A, -A, just like our other two girls. Right, exactly. This is from Samantha. What are each of your greatest accomplishments in life and what is one thing you regret or would do differently? I would say one of my greatest accomplishments is, I know this is like generic, it's just knowing in the shadow of my doubt is that like I have accomplished being an amazing father and a hell of a dad. I think yes, that is the biggest accomplishment a man can have in their life. You can have all of the degrees and this, that, and the other, but like that right there is like the core of my accomplishments. And what was one thing you would regret that you would do differently? Gosh, that's tough. I would have maybe taken school a little bit more seriously. Um, when I was like in high school, I was really focused on kind of like partying and, you know, I would say probably finishing baseball. I was adamant about playing baseball my entire life and then i just you know kind of fell off of playing baseball and sometimes i do go oh what if i would have kept playing baseball yeah i'd say my biggest accomplishment in life uh besides obviously being a wife and mother would probably be getting my degree when i had two small children and was pregnant but i persevered and i kept going and i tell people all the time if i can do it anybody can do it the mm -hmm. time's gonna pass anyway Right. So you might as well do something, you know? So I'd say that's my greatest accomplishment along with my like ultrasound registries. Mm -hmm. And I'd say the one regret I have would probably be that I didn't do water polo in college. Um, yeah. She had so many medals in her room when I like, <laughs> first, when I first met her, she had like all these medals and plaques and so stuff for water, <laughs> for water polo. I did swimming in water polo mm -hmm. and I was good at both. So I'd say that's probably my one regret in life, but you know what? We can live you know, our sports dreams by right. encouraging our children to, exactly. to follow their dreams and doing whatever they want to exactly. do. Exactly. This is from the Paisley Patch. Do you ever have arguments in your relationship? What's the most common reason? I mean, I think everybody has arguments. Yeah. Um, I mean, our, I, I'd say like we 
bicker? I don't know. Not really bicker, but I'd say our biggest argument is normally over Joey not listening to me. <laughs> or the the tower fan that we actually just had to replace. But that's not a fight. That's just me yeah. saying, turn off the fan. <laughs> I needed the that's noise in the room. Shout out to anybody that needs the noise going on in the room. But honestly, like we... Like, we never raise our voice in front of the kids. Like, we're... It's normally I just am like, you're annoying me. Get away from me. Yeah. And then five seconds later, I'm like... I know. I could never be mad at you. I love you so much. Those are my favorite... Those are my favorite days is when Sam is like, I can never be mad at you. I can never argue with you. And he goes, I'm going to remember this. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, all right, let's mark this day. I'm like, Tuesday. He doesn't really get mad at me, really, per se. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's really just more like we'll get annoyed with each other. Yeah. Or it's normally like uh, not understanding of where each other's coming from kind of right, thing. Right, right. Like, I'll give you an example. We were at a lunch a couple of days ago, mm-hmm. and Eliana, uh, Ariana was on the slide, and she, like, fell, and he was like, he was like, honey! <laughs> so, to me, I'm like, why am I getting yelled at? Because she fell. It's, it's but me- you have to just talk about it. Right. I told him, I said, I'm not mad. I'm just saying that when you yell like that, it makes me feel like you're saying, hey, you weren't watching her. This is your fault. Right. But really, and then he said, no, I'm just trying to get your attention. Right. So it's more of like you're misunderstanding the person's intent with it. And if you just calmly say it like that, then I was like, okay, well, next time maybe you can say, honey, watch out or something like that. So I don't feel like it's like an attack on me. Right. And I was trying to explain to her is that I was saying it like, honey, like, because she was the closest person to Ariana. I had nothing to do with like, but I understand where she's coming from. But the reason why I'm like, honey, because she was like right there. And like, I would, that was just my mind. But to me, I feel like he's right. disciplining totally me under, Totally understand. So it's really side. just talking because normally it's just miscommunication about what's really going on, what the person's right. intent is, stuff like that. Right. But I mean, sometimes he just doesn't listen to me. <laughs> I mean, listen, I, I have selective hearing sometimes. <laughs> Come on, guys. I mean, all 5% of the guys watching this. <laughs> I think it was 4% of the yeah, analytics. Yeah, it was like 95% women. <laughs> We love you. Uh, Melissa says, can we get a house tour? Yes. Yeah. I will do a house tour for you. Alexis, is it exhausting to feel like you always cleaning all of the time? I mean, no, not really. I just kind of like look <laughs> at it as like second nature. Um, like so There's I, a mess you have to clean. I mean. Yeah. I And I kind of incorporate it with like my, my last job, right? Um, I was doing a lot of cleaning when I worked at my last job, like speed cleaning, uh, working in retail. So I look at it as like, if it's a mess, like it just has to get done. And if it's done today, tomorrow, eventually, like I don't really put too much stock into it, but it does get overwhelming. And, um, like seeing it, especially like with all the kids, sometimes I get that, but like, no, it's not really exhausting. I just, I just know it's just going to like always, it's just happen. It's just cleaning is going to be happening. If you have children, um, and, and I, I love the comments that are like, I had this many kids and my house was never like that. And we were having this discussion. I'm, like, I'm okay. always like, I'm so happy for you. Yeah. I'm so happy for you. We were having this discussion. Number one, we live in a small house. Okay. I mean, obviously it's not that small, but like we live in a smaller house and a lot of our kids toys are in the first floor of like the living area right? because we want to be able to watch our kids while they're playing. We don't want them like up in there. They're not old enough in my opinion to be like up in their room by themselves. Mm -hmm. So we keep a lot of toys in the common areas and we just have stuff. I mean, we came, we had a bigger house before this house. We've lived in a four bedroom, 25, 2600 square foot house. And we downsized to a three bedroom, 1500 square foot house. So we had already gotten rid of like a lot of stuff right. when we had, when we moved here. I mean, our garage was packed. Mm-hmm. And so I just think that we have a lot of stuff in a smaller house and we have, we don't have a playroom. Right. I think Joey was saying that and I was like, I totally agree with that. Right. So the people that are saying, oh, my house never got like this because the kids were probably playing up in their room or how to play room. So essentially that entire house is the children's <laughs> play playroom. Room. Right. Yeah. So it right. makes total sense. And when our kids are older and we don't have toys in the living room, it'll be less cluttered in here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lost Girl Kayla, I know we only see a small part of your life, but what do you and Sam do when you get overwhelmed slash frustrated? 
Jeez. I mean, I've been feeling a little bit of that, like, over the last couple of weeks since she went back to work, especially, like, with the house and all the kids and when my two-year-old's screaming and crying and the baby screaming and crying and, like, tending to the baby. It, it's like, oh, there was a lot going on. And I think that – and I'm glad we're talking about this because – it is important as parents to put ourselves in timeout for like five <laughs> minutes at least. Like whether the kids are screaming and crying, it's okay to like run into the room for like and just be quiet for a minute or two and just kind of collect your thoughts and take a deep breath. And also, I like as cheesy as this says, I'm always like singing that Darius Rucker song in my head. It won't no, he, be he's like He's always this. singing it out loud. <laughs> right. Because I tell all my followers and I tell, you know, myself all the time, everything is just temporary when I'm overwhelmed and stressed out. Like, I'm not going to be overwhelmed and stressed out forever. That's kind of how I look at it. Honestly, for me, when I get really frustrated, I just kind of go into like a, that's the only way I can explain it. Like, I'm just like, all right, just get through the next five seconds, just get through the next five seconds, just get through the next five seconds. And then, you know... Obviously, we're not perfect. Sometimes we raise our voice or, you know, are quick to to judgment or like, don't do that. And I just say, you know, I always make sure to talk to my kids and say, hey, I know mommy was a little bit frustrated Mm -hmm. earlier and I just want to say that I'm sorry. I think it's important that we apologize to our kids if we act in a way that we don't want to act. You know, if I... If I raise my voice, I might say, hey, I know mommy kind of raised her voice and I just want to say sorry for that. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's okay to apologize to your children. Yeah. And I've noticed with with Ari, it really helps me if I'm frustrated that I go down to her level. Right, right. And I make her look me in the eye because I've noticed that that kind of calms her down and she'll listen to me if she's looking like directly in my eye and kind of getting on her level can you know, stop a huge tantrum from happening. Mm-hmm. So again, it's, it's really, just, it's, it's really, just, everybody goes through it and you're not alone. It's not fair to the kids. If like, I'm not raising my voice at you, then I like shouldn't be raising my voice at them, but I get it. Like it, it happens as parents. Like let's mm-hmm. put the bat down and start beating our, stop beating ourselves up. Like, you know, that sometimes we are our greatest enemies as parents is that like, you know, we, we get this bat and we start beating ourselves up, making ourselves feel guilty, you know, mm-hmm. and, you know, we're all not perfect, right? Mm-hmm. There's no, no, no one is perfect. There's no such thing as a perfect mom you or dad. You see people's lives on social media and you think like, oh my God, they're the perfect parents, but like no one is perfect. Everybody right. has, there's always room for improvement in every area of your life. Uh, Gracie says, what is your all time favorite food? 12 ounce ribeye cooked medium <laughs> rare with a house salad with extra ranch. Maybe some blue cheese crumbles and a baked potato loaded. Or a Caesar salad with anchovies. I, yeah, shout Not to, me, where, him. Where is, any, where is everybody that likes uh, anchovies? Anytime I go out to eat with Him her, and his family always order anchovies. But I'll say this, like they always make me feel like so thirsty in the middle of the night. I'm mm-hmm. like, I don't know what it is, but I just love a good anchovy with a Caesar salad. I'd say, what do you think my favorite food is? Uh, popcorn. <laughs> yeah, I mean meal. Um, sushi. Probably sushi. Yeah. But I really do love popcorn. Yeah, she's like popcorn fanatic. But it has to have like seasoning. Anytime on it. we go to the uh, movie theater, we always get we always spend like ninety eight dollars at the concession stand. It's the large popcorn. He's bringing in like a water from she Walmart. Like, she likes to get the the seasoning mm-hmm. at the concession stand. The nacho, I mean, whatever. Nacho cheese. <laughs> right. I did not put nacho cheese in my pocket. Uh, Remy, what does Sam use when recovering from postpartum that she recommends? I'm doing March. I'd say Congrats. my number one thing is to get a binder. Uh, you can find them on Amazon. I, I can put one in our storefront. Um, but basically, it's like something that like sucks you in um, after birth. That and it helps with like support if you had a C section. Mm-hmm. And but I have seen people that have had natural births use it as well. So. And Your hand is like oh, okay. Uh, Gabe wants to know what made you start asking questions during your cleaning vlogs. That's actually a really good question, and I don't have a clear answer for you. I think what happened is that I made a cleaning video, and I was like doing some talking in the video, and it just felt like right to like ask well, questions. Let me interrupt. That's like him in real life. <laughs> right. Like yes, he that's says it. that kind of stuff. Right. It's not like some skit he made up like that is literally how he talks yeah in real life. and like, that's what i'm thinking about like that's while what I'm he's cleaning. thinking yeah 
And it was like, I didn't like see any other creator like doing it or anything that way. It just like felt natural to like talk to you guys and interact with you while I'm doing these cleaning videos uh, because there's just so many cleaning videos of like the, the voiceovers and like the scripted, like the script of like what they're doing. And basically, and I used to do that. It'd be like, oh, and here I am cleaning the bathroom with my spray. Like I, I've done that. No, I, I just like talking in and creating conversation during my videos because I'm, listen, I'm a Libra. I like talking. I like making conversation with people that I don't know. And I like interacting with all of you. So I feel like the questions during my cleaning videos, it just creates conversation. Like good. And that's his real thoughts. <laughs> right. Like that's how he is in real life. Yeah. Yeah. Like you'll say that stuff all the time. Always... Oh, remember we like, we'll drive by places and we'll talk about stuff and we'll be like, Oh, remember Foot Locker? Like we, like yeah. we reminisce about stuff. And like I'm always that all like, and I'm always like, which I haven't incorporated yet in my cleaning videos, which I should. It's like the, what would you rather do? <laughs> Maybe I'll start doing. I, I, she oh hates my that. god! I'm like, would you? Would you? He rather? is the king of would you rather. If you ask <laughs> any people that know us in real life, they all know that. Especially when he gets tired. Yes. He comes <laughs> out with the craziest would you rather. Maybe I should do like more like late night when I'm tired. Who cleaning asked videos that question? That it gave. <laughs> Uh, here we go. Ashley, any advice from going to one kid to two? My baby is almost here, and I'm nervous for the change. Congratulations. Going from one to two, in my opinion, just really depends on the child. And I say that... And the age. In the age. Like, in, like your second... Your first child could sleep all night, and then the second child could be up every two hours, right? That was, like, for us. Mm -hmm. um, or the first child could be up all two every two hours and second child could be sleeping all night long um just be prepared to just be busier you know and mm -hmm. like you're already changing that you already know how to change the diapers you already know how to do the you already know how to do the things right it's just doing more of it cons consistently yeah and i actually think two to three was harder than one than one to two yeah. i didn't really feel anything like with one to two. i wasn't like oh this is so much harder <laughs> like because you i think it's because you're more prepared right because you're like it's not like your first where you don't know anything and you're trying to figure things out you feel a lot more prepared with the second one you're mm -hmm. like i know how to do this you know more confident yeah you're a lot more confident yeah and like i don't know it's just like when you when you go when you have one child you're like oh my god like and then when you have two, it just, it just, there's that old saying, it's like, like, are you ever ready for like more children? Like, you know, it's there's just like, never a good time. You know, when you have, when you start having multiple children, it just kind of like, just gets busier. You become, mm -hmm. cons you need to become consistently consistent, right? Like, yeah. And I remember being like, so focused on, oh, I still got to give our oldest attention. Right. But then I was like, this poor baby's not getting talked to. <laughs> right. So it's really just. Yes, you're focusing on giving a lot of the attention to the older child because you don't want them to feel, feel left out. But, like, mm -hmm. don't forget about the baby, too. You know what right. I mean? Right, and that is the thing. And that is a real, like, parent guilt kind of situation. Like, if you, you're not, like, paying attention, like, once you start having multiple mm -hmm. children. But, like, the kids aren't really thinking about that, right? We're the ones thinking about that. Like, mm -hmm. oh, my God, like, did I not spend as much time? You know what I mean? Like, and, and if you're thinking about that, you're a great parent. Like, if yeah. you were finding yourself laying in bed at night... Like going, oh, did I play with them enough or did I spend enough time with our oldest? Then that means you care. Yeah, right? that's true. It, Leslie says, what was Sammy's MySpace playlist? <laughs> I think we all know it was Mayday Parade. Yeah, it was like pop, punk, emo. Shout out to Mayday Parade. I love you. If you happen to ever see this video, <laughs> my life would be complete and mine in my playlist is the same songs that you sometimes hear in my videos, like old school, like R&B. Like Jamie yeah. Foxx, like Boys to Men, techno, all of you them. Like techno. House music, some techno music. Yeah. I also had um, Taylor Swift. <laughs> Sam is always like, me. I was Taylor Swift's one of her first MySpace I, friends. I was. I followed Taylor Swift on MySpace when she when she was not like really big, and so I'm always. I like, hear this story like three times. So a yeah, year. every time Taylor Swift comes on, I'm like, oh, I followed her on MySpace. So yeah, I followed her <laughs> and uh, that song like when you think Tim McGraw, McGraw I hope we'll you be think that, that favorite, favorite song. song. And then I had also uh, the Wreckers. <laughs> when you're gone, no, no. Okay. Mm -mm. Maddie... Leave the pieces. Leave the pieces when you're gone. Oh, okay, yeah, I know that one. Oh yeah. <laughs> 
it's like her fame. I was on I was on Taylor Swift's <laughs> top eight. <laughs> I was not. Didn't you guys get mad when like somebody was on your top eight and like you weren't on the? It was like. Mm-hmm. But it was the top ten, and then, to and, top then it's, and then before you know it was a top fifty. So like your whole friends list was <laughs> on your top. Uh, let's see. Maddie says, "Would you guys ever move to another state?" So that's a very popular no. question. Now we really love Florida. We love being in Central Florida. We love being 10, 15 minutes from the beach. Um, we um, we cannot. We're not people that can be away from our. Families. A lot of our family in front. We live within an hour uh, of all of our family, most of them, and then we live within minutes of all of our friends. Uh, and there are some people that like move and go take jobs and take chances, which I'm all for that. I'm all for taking chances and taking risks. Yeah. We took a life. chance, but it was like moving 45 minutes. Right. Yeah. And then it was too far. Right. So, yeah. So yeah, no. we're in central Florida. We love it here. The answer is no. Uh, our Burex, the Dean, how did you guys to, how did you two meet? So we met at a friend's house. We met at a friend's house. And I was about to leave the house. It was with a, it was like a little gathering party thing, nothing crazy. I was about to leave, and a friend of mine was like, "Oh, so and so is coming with two girls," and I was like, "You know what? Shout out to Allison. I'm gonna stay for a few minutes because I was a 21 year old, a young stallion that was single, and I was like, all right, let's see what's going on." <laughs> so uh, Sam showed up with her friend Allison, and she mm-hmm. was wearing a black beautiful dress. And she had on. Uh, he like, says I was wearing Osiris's. The, the most beautiful brown eyes. He did say, and he was wearing a hat, a white then, Seminole State hat that was backwards. Yes, Not Seminole State. Seminole State. <laughs> he Florida was wearing, State Seminoles. He was wearing a white FSU hat backwards, and I fed him a piece of pizza. And she was eighteen. I was 21. She was moving to my hometown. And I asked for his number. She asked me for my number so for ladies, directions. Ladies, just go out there and get it, okay? And then she texted me like 15 minutes later, like, oh, you're so cute and stuff like that. And like we texted all night long. And then within a week of her moving here, we were pretty much moved in with each other. Mm-hmm. Within two weeks, I was telling her I loved her. Did so, it even take two weeks? And, no, but like, <laughs> and that's like my suggestion. That is my relationship suggestion. This is maybe unpopular. Actually, I don't think it is unpopular because I hear a lot of people doing it. Rush into it. Move in with each it. other right away. Get it all out of the way. See if you're compatible with living with each other, right? Because there's so many people that are getting engaged or tying a knot and then moving in with each other. And you're like, oh my God, that person poops with the door open or, you know, farts in their sleep or something of that nature. And they're like, I can't live with this person. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to do some Facebook questions now. Patty wants to know, we should do a meet and greet sometime. I look forward to your videos and would love to meet you guys. So Sam did her research on a meet and greet. And I thought it would sound like a great idea until some of the ideas, or some of the things that she was she saying. She was like, oh, we can just meet here. And then I like I read like, this article about somebody who did that. And like the police came and it was a whole thing. That and would then, be my luck. Uh, I think you all remember TanaCon when no one had water. Right. You know. I'm getting booked into, you know, the county jail. Like, oh, dehydration at Joey Foo's meet and greet. Yeah. Like, like, stood in line for three hours and even get to see yeah, us. Yeah, we need like, to we figure something out. To I want to meet you guys. I would love to yeah. be. I would and love to And obviously, meet we'd want it to be free. Like, we wouldn't want. 100%. But we would. It's almost like you have to sell tickets to know the number of people. Right, right. But not even like sell them, maybe like a lottery or something. Right. Because you, you have to have a space that can accommodate a certain amount of people. Yes. So stay tuned. And plus, for that. we would need to know how many people were even interested in it anyway. Right. Uh, if like five people were like, oh yeah, we want to commute, you'd <laughs> right. be down for that. I would be but down then we need like a smaller space and that'd be totally yes. cool. So we'll work, we're going to work on that. We will mm-hmm. promise. Allie wants to know what's your favorite part of making videos and what's your least favorite part of making, making videos. My favorite part of making videos is connected, like just sharing my life with you guys. Um, and the excitement of what you guys are going to say about my videos um, I, I, I find it be, I, it's like a hobby of mine. Um, I, and I feel like if you have a hobby, you get excited over it. And my least favorite part would be the editing. While, Even though he's actually really good at it. I will say this. I'm not tooting my own horn. I am very good at editing mm-hmm. and it just and if it's you're wondering talent we didn't even know and if had. you're wondering how like i got to be good at editing is because i have been posting videos like every day or every other day like nonstop uh for the last year or so year ish 
And yeah, if you do something long enough, you hopefully right. get better at so it. So I think the editing, like especially while having like children, is my least favorite part because like while I'm editing and if the kids like need something, I have to like in my conscience be like, all right, I need to put the editing down, right? Attend to the children. Or we'll you know. say, oh, he's doing his homework. I'm doing my homework. Now I, now I have homework yeah, when I'm doing my doing editing. doing his homework. How can I help you? <laughs> what about you with making videos? Um, I think like setting up the tripod and the lights and stuff is definitely my least favorite. Like I'm always like, can you do it? Yeah. Um, I and like then I let, I really did. And I'm not good at editing on TikTok just cause he's been doing it for a lot longer. So mm-hmm. I'll just give him my phone. He does it. Um, but I really did enjoy editing the first video. So we'll see if I like editing the second one. Yeah. Perfect team. She, I like to do the editing and you like to do the setup. I love her videos. Her videos are so hard to edit because she does like the makeup tutorials and the hair tutorials and that is different than like my cleaning videos like editing wise also let's be real like when you're trying to multitask when you're trying to do your makeup and talk at the same time it's (laughs) hard so i'll have a lot of like uh like i'm trying to think and so he has to edit out all those parts on tiktok which i had that too like let's give ourselves some grace you say like so all right so yeah um like all those things. A lot of the times when you start a video, you say so and or yeah, like you said, and you know, and or you know, you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it just happens. It, you know, so we just have to, you know, sometimes edit it out or keep it on there, and you know, just see kind of like what sounds right when mm-hmm. we're editing it. Do uh, do 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 do. Vicky says, "How do you stay so positive? How did you become so natural in front of the camera? Do you enjoy staying at home?" Or would you rather be working a desk job? No, I would definitely not be working a desk job. <laughs> Staying at home is and being a stay-at-home dad has been the greatest, most rewarding, fulfilling thing I've ever done. I've been in sales. I've made other people rich. I've worked in retail. I've worked in restaurants. Um, so no, Which he actually was really good at working as a server because yeah. you are so personable and like to talk to people. Right. Which is why I think you're so good in front of the camera. Cause you're I just, loved waiting tables. Like you're naturally like an outgoing kind mm-hmm. of like positive person. Yeah. So that's probably why you're so good at serving and why you're so good in front of the camera. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't. I didn't like take classes or anything like that. I just. <laughs> no I just, one asked you if you took <laughs> classes. Well. Uh, maybe some people thought that like I take like uh like no one thought that I don't know but like I just turn on the ca- I literally just turn on the camera and talk like that's it <laughs> there uh, this I- is literally what he's like in real life like uh I feel like that oh was like God. a six part question um how do you feel about other family vloggers and how will you be different from them so Sam and that is from <laughs> Lee uh how do you pronounce her name Lena, maybe? Lena. Uh, so Sam and I were just talking about this. And there are a lot of family YouTuber bloggers that... So here's what I'll say that we will do different um, than most of them. One is that the cleaning videos that I will be doing, these people, let's be honest, the, these YouTube <laughs> people that do the... Not all of them. Not all of them. I'm not going to say all of them. When they do... The ones I like to watch probably they do. Are cleaning, <laughs> they are cleaning a house that is already cleaned, for God's sakes. <laughs> like, have you all seen my house and all my videos? None... I have not seen one YouTube cleaning video. I Maybe a couple that has <laughs> shown a house like mine. This... We were watching a YouTube cleaning video earlier where a lady was vacuuming a couch that literally looked like it was just vacuumed. <laughs> or mopping a floor that already looked shiny. So that's how I will be different in the YouTube cleaning world and the children. So that is a very popular uh, conversation. It's like, since we are now becoming or want to do family YouTube vlogging is like, that's what we're like calling it. There's this like narrative that's like, Oh my God, like people are going to just make their kids do this and perform. And they're going to be the center of attention that comes with the family youtube like kind of like verbiage but like for us if you've like watched our content the kids are there but like they're not like the main stars we're not like making we're not pointing the camera at our kids for 5 10 15 20 seconds like telling them to do these things and answering them questions but like we're going to be filming stuff as a family right so the kid right. the kids are going to be they're already in, in some of our the videos, videos right so... so like and and people are like oh protect the children yes we are protecting 
our children. And I understand where that all comes from. Don't get mm-hmm. me wrong. But like, no, I'm not going to be, we're not going to be like having the kids up there, like and telling them to like act out and do all this like stuff that you see, like a lot of families doing on YouTube. No, they're just going to be with us. It's just our regular life. Yeah, like, just like with us. If we didn't have our kids, then that wouldn't be our life. Like exactly. it's, it's our life. And like we posted our kids on Facebook, social media before yeah. we even So where does that did like, social media right. and made but money nobody from it. but nobody wants to talk about that, how you've been posting pictures and videos of your children since two thousand seven on Facebook right. and yeah. Instagram, but now all of a sudden you see people doing it on other apps and it's like, Oh no, 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 you're exploiting your children. Yeah. So like it's I said, like you post your kids all the time on Facebook and people with like us. it. Like we are a family. Yeah. And we're going to film and do things as a family. But like I said, my kids are not going to be the main stars and the main focus of our family YouTubing content. Right. And I mean, if you if that if you don't like watching family kind of stuff, then just don't watch it. Right. I mean uh, yeah, that's uh, yes. that's all we can say. Like, but it's... you can watch all of our videos and all my videos on TikTok, and you cannot point to one where it's like, okay, like you know, uh, the he's putting his ch- children out there like way too much. Mm-hmm. So I don't understand the kind of like where that argument where that is now for narrative like, came like from. putting us into that you know argument. So. And plus, it'll be so nice to be able to look back on memories. With yeah, and kids. nobody wants to talk about that either. So nowadays, people aren't using a camcorder and putting all of their home videos on this, like, tape. You know what I mean? People are putting all of their home videos on their apps, Facebook, YouTube. Mm-hmm. So, like, it's going to, like, maybe one day the kids will want to see the videos, mm-hmm. uh, you know, years come down the road of us doing things together. Right. And no one's ever going to agree with everything that you do. And that's totally okay. Right. We just need to focus on the positive people. Don't let, you know, three negative comments out of 3,000 positive ones, you know, ruin something for yeah. you. Yeah, we, I had, we had announced that we were going to be making family videos on YouTube. So I was like, this is so disappointing. I'm just yeah. like... If and then it th- kind of makes me disappointed. And I'm right. like, no with all the other thousands of people that were like, we're so excited and they came over here and subscribed right. and we like, love you guys. So we need to focus on those people 100%. and not, and a lot of people always ask, how do you deal with the hate? How do you deal with the hate? Of course, everybody knows they help the algorithm. Even if you're watching, even if you dislike this video, the people that don't, helping. the people that say they don't like you or disagree with you, they're the ones watching you the most. Yes. <laughs> so they're still helping you in the algorithm, right. but also like, We can't focus on those people. We have to focus on the people that are supporting us and loving us and stay in that kind of positive energy. Yes, right. When you have like 99% of the people that are loving you and supporting you and stuff like that, then that will outweigh those negative Don't let that 1% get you down, girl. Exactly. And you can say, and anybody watching this can say that about anything. You can have a new haircut and you have nine people say that they love the new haircut. And then you have that one person that says something. You'll be thinking about what that one person said. All day long. And I then get it. it just, Trust me. It kind of just, it, it's like, then why, why did the nine other people even say anything nice? So we have, you have to focus on those people. Exactly. Cheryl says, when will the YouTube videos be like each week? So we're going to try and do one to two videos a week. Yeah. I think that's a small goal, right? Definitely one. Because we're still posting on our other apps. And that's another thing too. People think that we're just going to stop posting on. No, we're still going to be posting on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, but yeah, we're starting out small, small, maybe like one video a week, maybe two. Yeah, definitely one video a week. And then maybe if we're feeling extra spicy, you might get mm-hmm. two. Oh, Victoria, what is your favorite thing about each other? <laughs> I already know what he's going to say. Um, that you laugh at my jokes. Yes, he always answers two things. And she is the smartest, smartest person, person I've I ever know. met. I love how smart she is <laughs> in that like she retains information very well and also is that she explains things to me that in a way that i understand i speak his language so yes. something said i can tell on his face he literally doesn't know what they're saying i can explain it to him in his language and what i love is we'll be with a group of people and i'll be saying something and they don't understand what i'm saying and then she'll put it in a way to to them mm-hmm. that like okay this is what he means 
Right. I just speak his language. I think yes. it's because we've been together for so long. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I love that he makes me laugh. Yes. And of course, he takes care of yes. me. All right, I've she, been his princess forever. Since 2010. <laughs> Uh, Alba asks, what is your favorite memory as a couple and as a parent? Gosh, as a couple, we've done a lot of traveling together. I would say, of course, the generic one is getting married, getting engaged. That didn't even cross my mind. I was thinking. (laughs) Jesus Lord. I was thinking about our honeymoon. Yeah, the cruise. Going to Minnesota. We went to. About our baby moon. Oh, in Miami, that was so fun. And then, like, just going to Dolphin Games together. Yeah, yeah. We like to go to Dolphin Games once a um, year because I'm mm-hmm. a, we're both that. Well, I was a hardcore Dolphins fan. Now she is too. Yeah. Favorite memory as a parent? Uh, I mean, again, the generic answer watching our kids being born, like becoming a parent, um, seeing them walk. Uh, develop. Um, <laughs> I know you're like, what is he talking about? <laughs> I love how I'm like, <laughs> she's so sentimental. I was going to say something like, I like seeing them um, get excited for things, like yeah. taking them to a new place. Yeah. I love surprises, like mm-hmm. creating them. So I'd say, like, taking them to Disney or like yeah. taking them to SeaWorld, like stuff like that. Like uh-huh. seeing them get like really excited. Yeah. I like that kind of stuff. Me too. And the last question is... The last question. Brienne asks, do we want any more children? So we used to want four kids. We always wanted four <laughs> we kids. We have three children right now. Um, and I think, think I could speak for Sam and, you know, she'll... But like being pregnant, it's a lot. I don't think I can be pregnant again. She's been pregnant a lot of times. There's been a lot of things happen. And, you know, I don't... Right? I mean, am I on to something? Mm-hmm. I don't think I could be pregnant again. <laughs> Right. Totally would be up for adoption. Yeah, later on, I think down in the road, like when we're more like financially set, set, secure. Yeah, adoption is because de- Sam was adopted, mm-hmm. and I support adoption. Mm-hmm. And um, but I feel like if we're gonna adopt, that's like make sure like we are like good, good. We would need like a five bedroom house, <laughs> right? Like, like a, yeah. maybe a bigger house, right? Mm-hmm. So do would we be open to more children? Yes, we would be open to another pregnancy. I mean. Obviously, if it happened accidentally, it would. Hey, you never know. She's like, got an IUD right now, but like, we'll see. We would we would roll with the punches. But the reason I didn't like get my tube side was because I was like, you never like a lot of my friends are in their late thirties and they have like these baby crisis. They're like, I need a baby. So I don't know when I'm like thirty six or something, I could have a crisis and want another right. baby. So I just didn't want anything that was too final. Yeah. But if as of right now. I'm happy with our three children and all of that. But ask me next year. So it is signed mug giveaway. We have a mug uh, that Sam and I both signed, a Scrub Daddy mug. We're going to pick one random subscriber. We're going to close our eyes and you're going to pick one and we'll announce it right now. Just tell me when my eyes need to be open. Got it. All right. Um, It is M-L-E-T-E-M. M-L-E-Y-T-E-M. Uh, so you are the winner. Mm-hmm. I love that your home is so real. House becoming an utter disaster and doing a frantic clean. <laughs> yes. The constant decluttering. Also more Hugo. Right. We love a girl that loves Hugo. So, all right. Yeah. Well, um, um can you message on YouTube? Uh, I think I can. So we'll find a way to get the mug to you. Yeah. But yay, congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you for commenting and watching yes. the video. All right, so it is almost midnight. I think it's our time to wrap this up. Mm-hmm. Uh, if we missed a question, maybe we'll do this like once every couple months or so. Yeah, it was cool. Um, so thank you for watching. Thank you for bearing with us. We are <laughs> getting new camera equipment. We got new mm-hmm. microphones and stuff. So we're just starting out from scratch. This is only our second video, but yeah. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys. All right, guys. thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>